All right, it looks like everyone's got their meals going so far, so we'd like to welcome you today to our business, Succession and Transition Lunch and Learn. And we've been hitting the milk, the milk run on this all week, me and Scott and Clark and Kai over here were doing Revelstoke Golden Salmon Arm and Vernon. So it's been quite the week. You get the streamlined version, the best version yet. So you get the best one today. And I just want to mention if you guys need anything from the tables or if you're still hungry after you eat, feel free to get up and get some more food. Um, you know, we're pretty easy on that sort of stuff. So without further ado, we're really thrilled to be here today to get you some great information. We're presenting to business owners across the region because we want to make sure that at the end of the day you end up with dollar bills in your pocket versus just having to close your doors which is what most businesses actually wind up doing so without further ado i'll introduce our first speaker today we have four and he is from what the well stand group out of revelstoke but again works in the region he has run 10 small businesses in his short lifetime he's a certified business intermediary a certified value builder, a commercial realtor, and also a city councillor in Revelstoke. And the special thing about Scott is that there's only 36 people in Canada that are licensed to do the things that he can do for us. So it's great to have him here. We're lucky to have him and his breadth of knowledge. So put your hands together in welcoming up Scott Duke. Thank you. Thanks, Dina. Thanks for everyone for coming out. And the, the whole purpose, like Sabina said, for us doing this lunch and learn rubber chicken circuit, as they call it, is to really just get the information out to you guys so that you have a better chance of success when going to transition your companies. And that's that's the whole reason why I put this thing together. And I'm pretty excited about it. And what you learn, you can take it out and teach it to your friends and uh, fellow associates so they can be successful as well. And uh, you'll, what you'll learn here will be very helpful. So my presentation today, I'm going to do a quick overview of it. So business sale success rates. We're going to talk a little bit about what the actual success rates are going out there for people that are selling their businesses. So it's uh, it's interesting these statistics. Then I'm going to talk about three things that need to be put in every single business deal, whether it be you're selling shoes, whether you're selling Kelly ski trip, whether you're selling your company. These three things must be present to be successful. And then this is why I'm really here today, and I put printouts on your, your tables as well. This, this is a bunch of research has gone into this, the eight things that every business must have to attract a buyer. And I'm going to talk, it, most of my presentation is going to go on that, and, and I'm going to speak to that because it's, it's really good quality information to, uh, for you guys to take on. Uh, okay, first, so the first thing is, so what are my chances? And myself, Sabina said I've run 10 things in the past before, and a lot of them have been smaller little tiny things are nothing too impressive. But the first one that I ran was a, was a painting company. So when I was in university, it was called Lakeside Quality Painters. We ran to 15 staff, and it was really quite profitable. And we kind of grew that company, and it ran for three and a half, four years. And at the end of that term, I had a partnership dispute, and basically that company went to zero at that point. And I was young, and it didn't matter to me, because I didn't know. I didn't know you could sell a company. I didn't know you could, could transition out of one. So it wasn't really a big deal. And then after that, I started a, a wakeboard can. It's basically a water ski can. And, and we took this thing, and this ran for over five years. And at the end of it, it was the largest wakeboard facility in North America. We had three locations. We had five boats. We had 25 staff that worked for us. Uh, and the revenues of this, uh, this venture were actually quite good. Unfortunately, at the end of this, we had the same thing happen. I had a partnership deterioration. The landlord wouldn't renew the lease. And this, this business also did the same thing, which is kind of cratering. So what, it, what we did with that is I just sold the assets. And this is quite tragic because knowing what I know now, I would have been able to get out of this business. I, it would have sold for around $250,000. But the only thing I got out of it was selling the jet skis and selling some of our boats. And I ended up getting $20,000 that I walked away with. So that was kind of unfortunate. But what it did was it taught me a lesson. It taught me that, hey, you better build into the next company that you start the ability to transition it to a new person. So I moved up to Revelstoke. I started a hot dog cart to get myself established. But after that, I started a radio station. The radio station, it's, it's been running for five and a half years now. At about the three and a half year mark, I transitioned that to a new operator. I'm on the board right now, and it, it's still running. But basically, I used it as a, a, a petri dish for teaching me how to transition companies. And so it's still operating and it's good. It's, it's going to be just fine. Uh, in parallel with that, I've started a property management company. So that, and that's been running for five years as well. But this is teaching me that companies of larger scale, companies that have a lot more revenue coming into them, 
they need more time. They need more time to put processes in place to make sure that you can transition it. So I know that even after running this thing for five years, and it has, we have 22 staff with that right now, it is going to take another two years for me to get this to the point where I can actually sell it. So either way, this will eventually sell. But so far in my life, I personally have not had a lot of success rates with transitioning my stuff, but we have for our clients, because what I've learned, I've been transitioning that knowledge over to them. And what I do at this point in the presentation is I ask the audience, what do you think the, the average, the percentage success rate is for those individuals that go to sell their business? Or in other words, how many actually sell once they go to market? What do you think? Give me this table over here. 20%. 20%? Okay. This table think it's higher. Ten percent think it's lower. Okay. Anyone out there think it's any other guesses? What does this table think? Yeah. You're with ten. Yeah. I must say you're you're pessimistic. <laughs> other groups are throwing up seventy percent. Uh, actually, it is twenty percent. This is this is the number. That's the aggregate number. So far, with our company been running for two and a half years, we've been hitting seventy five. And the more companies that we sell, we keep improving that number, which has been really good, and we're happy about that. But that's that's the number, and that's and the question is, where does that number come from? So it comes from, so I have this little slide about all of us as business owners going through our day-to-day -day and trying to really just make it through uh, with these runners not uh, getting over the hurdles. But So this comes from Biz Buy Sell. And Biz Buy Sell, this is the largest internet website for selling your business. It's kind of like the Airbnb for selling businesses. Uh, if, you, if you write this down, if you're going to want to list your business, this is a good site. But also, if you're in Canada, it's businessforsale.com. It gets the most traction in Canada. And that's because this site is just optimized for the United States. But it's still pretty good, and we'll get some gener lead generation through it. So the guy that runs this is CEO president. His name's Bob House. The last two conferences I've been to with the International Business Brokers Association, he's been there, I've talked to him about it, and he's the one that's giving me these numbers, but then they also have articles about it, about the 20%. And then so what I do, I ask him, like, why is it? Why are we not seeing a higher success rate? Because these are individuals that have got to the point, they've run their businesses, they're successful enough to list them on a site, they know they want to sell, what, what are they missing out? And these, these three things are the first, and then when we get into the eight drivers, that's how you can even push yourself even further to be more successful. So the first thing is price, okay? Price must be right, or it's gotta be close. If it's not close, you're not gonna get someone come to your door and even have a conversation with them, right? And the second is the product must be right, and with businesses, it's, it's more you're trying to find someone who want, wants to do the niche you're in, wants to do the service you're in, but mostly you've got to market it properly. It's got to be attractive to them. And then the last is trust. And so I have a little bit of examples that I go through on each of one of these things to kind of drill it home a little bit. So basically, I put up this car here. So this is a Honda Civic. It's a 2001. It's got 109,000 bombers on it. It's got heat, it's got AC, very clean car, you know, nice reliable vehicles, probably gonna go to 300,000 kilometers. And what I've done in each community so far is we've done a little bit of a bidding process to get the market value of this vehicle. And so I'm gonna throw it out there. We'll start here, we'll quickly go around. What would you pay for this vehicle, table A? $2,500. $2,500, okay. Okay, what would you guys pay for this vehicle? Lovely vehicle, very clean, okay? It's gonna get you where you need to go. Okay, okay. And I had a 600, so I'm going to put that there too. Okay, here. 1500? Don't worry, you don't have to buy at the end of it. <laughs> this, is, this is literally just an example. Okay, what are you guys thinking? Yes, desperation is actually a big thing. Okay, so we'll put 1200. And lastly, last table over there. What are you guys thinking? Two grand. Two grand. Okay. So I'm not going to do the quick math, but anyhow, we're probably sitting somewhere in 25, 25, 2000. So we're actually probably sitting somewhere around the 2000 mark with this audience. We got 600 in another community, we got 1500, and we got 2500. So either way, out of all the communities, this is actually where this sits for market value, it's around that $2,000 mark. 
And the thing about this owner of this vehicle, they have other bills to pay, they've got debts, they have want to retire, they actually want a nicer car than this. They want to get a better car and take their money out. They asked their friend what they thought it was worth, their friend said it was worth 10 grand. So what this individual said is I'm going to list on every site that, it, that is out there. So I'm going to get on Kijiji, I'm going to get on the Auto Trader, I'm going to get everywhere I possibly can in the paper so that I have the widest possible audience and the highest chance of getting a, a, bigger, a higher price. And so they listed this car for $54,000. <laughs> And it's laughable, but this is part of the thing. If, if you don't get close, you are not going to have someone ever contact you to purchase it. This guy's going to get, or girl's going to get, no, no one contacts him about this vehicle. And that's important when you go to list your business as well. You want to make sure that you get evaluated and you get close enough to start conversations. Okay, the next is product. The product must be right. And the example I have for this is that I'm going to go for a hike. And I'm going to go to the shoe store, Universal Footwear is a shoe store that we have in Revelstoke. And I'm going to say, hey, I need some hiking shoes. If they bring me running shoes, if they bring me dress shoes, if they bring me anything but hiking shoes, I'm not going to start talking to them until I get the hiking shoe. So it's all about knowing what your buyer wants and making sure that you're presenting that appropriately to them. Okay, and the last is trust. And trust, regardless of what you're selling, has to be present in the sale, but it is especially important with selling your business. And the bigger the sale and transaction you have, the more trust is important. And when you're selling your business, it's probably going to be the biggest thing you sell in your life. So you have to work on the trust component. And the example I have for this is Google and Apple. We trust these companies. We use their products. They always do what we, what we think they're going to do when we buy them. We type into Google. It pops up the answers to us. So then we're comfortable to buy other products off them, other services off them. Then we have Samsung and Volkswagen, which we've all probably used before and had, had a good trust with us, but they've eroded that recently, a little bit with their phone setting on fire. You get in a plane, it tells you that you can't keep a Samsung 7. And Volkswagen, they have vehicles that maybe have double the emissions and they're supposed to, right? So these are the things that erode trust and make us think twice about buying something. All right, so Zig Ziglar says, if people like you, they'll, they'll listen to you, but if they trust you, they'll do business with you. And our job in our company is building trust right from the start, right to the end, between the buyer and the seller. It's so, it, it's critical. It's the biggest thing. Um, okay, so this is the, the bulk of my presentation that I, that I wanted to get to you for you guys, because this is where the core of the information lies that you can take away and use. And again, I put this out there for you so you have it to take home. But this stuff was put together by a guy named John Rilla. And so this guy wrote this book, Built to Sell. And after my base camp, which was, I loved that company, but anyway, after it kind of crashed, uh, I, this is the book I bought and picked up, because I, I really didn't want to go through the pain of that happening again. I wanted my next company to be sellable. So I bought this book, and I've kind of been following this guy since then, and had the pleasure of speaking with him in uh, Toronto, and then in Vancouver. And, and what he's done with his life is the last 10 years, he's studied 25,000 businesses and why some sell, why some don't, and for those that do sell, why they sell for higher multiples versus lower multiples. And this is what he came up with. So there's eight of these things. I'm gonna go through them quickly. And if we're here afterwards to talk to us more about them. But so financial performance. This is your financials. This is the cash flow that your company is generating and the reliability of that cash flow. So are your books good? Does it show solid cash flow and can it be backed up? Okay, growth potential. This is your market, this is your sector, this is your industry, this is your community. Are those things growing? If they are growing, thumbs up. If they aren't, we need to work on that stuff, right? So those two top ones, people ask me, hey, if you're gonna rate these things, which one's the most important? Those ones, those top two, they're the most important. Do you have growth? Do you have cash flow? Okay, the next one is single customer, individual employee dependence. If you have an employee in your company that you're 100% relying on, and this employee, or maybe you, but if this employee leaves, then you're in big trouble. Buyers are not going to like that. Second thing is if you have a single customer. If you have saturation by one customer in your business, it's over 15%, that's a problem. Most businesses, your, your take home, your net, is about 15 to 20%, depending on the industry that you're in. But if you lose that customer, it's 15%, you could lose your, your bottom line, right? So buyers don't like that. Working capital needs. How much capital does your company consume? If there's a competitor that uses less to put out the same thing, they're going to be more attractive. Recurring revenue. So this is how many times is a customer going to buy off you in a year, or two years, or whatever the buying cycle is. If you're a wedding photographer, they may get you once, they may get you twice, hopefully only once, right? But what you want is your customers coming back. So a good example is this is a magazine subscription. Every single month they're, you're paying again and again. You'll see the software companies now going to this model like Microsoft. So every single month you get, you get a charge. Recurring revenue is good. 
This is what buyers want to see. They want to know customers are coming back. <laughs> Monopoly control. This is what Warren Buffett says, the moat that's around your company is your competitive difference. So what makes your company better? What, what puts you ahead of your competition and what makes it so that no one else can copy and, and compete with you? If you have good monopoly, people, people want to see that. Buyers want to see that. Customer satisfaction. This is the number one way of figuring out what your growth of your company is going to be in the future. It is asking your current customers, what is the likelihood that you are going to um, suggest or promote my, custom, my product or service to a friend or family member? It's called the Net Promoter Score, and this one, uh, this one survey that you put out to your customers will tell you the percentage chance of your company growing in the future. It's actually quite interesting. So, and then the last one is Hub and Spoke, and this is my last one that I'll do, and I'll go back to the, my whiteboard here, because this one's important for any, anybody that's running business likely under $3 million a year is probably going to be dealing with this issue and have to tackle it. So as an owner of a business, you're here, this is you, and you started your business whenever you started it, and as you grow, different things get added on to your business, okay? So you have, you're have you adding more employees, okay? You're adding more vendors, suppliers, okay? You have distributors, and you have your customers out here. And if your business model right now, and this is what this is called, is the hub and spoke, if you're the hub, if your business model has you having to connect and contact with all these individuals, the big problem is, is that when you go to sell your company, you're no longer going to be there. And this model breaks. And this is the biggest thing for a buyer. They want to know that there's processes, systems in place, that the staff have uh, redundancy. So if one of them leaves, they're still going to be, uh, the business is still going to be able to run. So that they would, when they purchase that, they know there's stability to it. And they can plug themselves into this position, right? Uh, so this is the biggest thing, and this is what I find in our business is is the hardest thing to get uh, get solved for going to sell your company. Okay, so if those are all the drivers, then the question is, when you're sitting out in the audience, where do you sit in the equation, right? And so again, twenty five thousand businesses have been studied, and I think I'm trying to think of that there's about two thousand, three thousand have gone through and done this score. So anyhow, it's it's quite good, but if you go through, you can do this survey, and it'll come back and it'll give you your score, where you sit in all these value drivers. And it pumps out a final number. It basically puts up this little gas gauge here, and if you're above 80, what it says is that you're likely to sell, and you're likely to sell for 71% more than the average company. If you're below that, if the gauge kind of drops down in your company, it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It just means that things need to be done before you can sell. But if you get below that 50 zone, you're probably not going to sell. You're going to be in that 80% that doesn't. So you, you, what you want to do is, this survey is free. And by the way, if you, if you registered online, we're sending it out to you afterwards so you can do it. Uh, and if you didn't register online, you can drop your email off and we'll send you an email with it. But this will give you an indication of where you're at right now. Okay? And uh, I've been through it. I've done it for my property management company. I've done it for the radio station. It's quite good. It gives you some good feedback and good information. All right. So that's, that's the end of my presentation. And the next, next up is Clark. So Clark's a senior manager. He's a CPA with BDO. He operates out of Revelstoke, but also covers this territory. And how long have you been with BDO? I've uh, been in Revelstoke for three years. So. Okay, he's a senior manager there. So I'd like to welcome Clark Traverse. Sure.